children love doing crafts. As a matter of fact, I find that one of the first things that they ask when they come into class is, what are we going to make today? So if crafts are important to the kids and they really like doing it, then we need to make sure that the crafts that they're doing are reflecting the lesson that we're teaching. So I want to talk about three important parts in preparing for your craft and what idea you're going to use in order to make that craft time a time that is really teaching the children about the Bible story. The first thing is, is if you're doing a craft, you want to make sure that it reflects the actual story you're doing. If you were doing the story of Jonah and the big fish, you wouldn't want to do a cute little lion craft because that wouldn't have anything to do with your story. Although it's a cute craft, you want to make sure that it's reflecting the lesson and that they're going home with something that's going to be a reminder of what they learned from God's Word that day. The second thing that we want to look at is using your craft as part of your story. If you were to do a story and use your craft, then the children are actually making it and taking it home with them. An example of that would be Naaman. Now I would actually use this as I'm telling the story to the children. So here's Naaman, and he went down to the Jordan because he had leprosy, and he dipped himself in the Jordan River. Now how many times did he dip himself? I would ask the children, and they would count with me the seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then Naaman came up all clean. All of his leprosy was gone. So here I've told the story with the craft. It's been my visual. And now the children are going to make it and they're going to take it home with them and be able to retell the story again and again about how God healed Naaman's leprosy. The last thing that we want to look at is having your craft be age appropriate. Uh, you wouldn't want to do a craft that's too difficult for the little ones and then again you wouldn't want to have a craft that was too easy and not challenging for the older ones. So if we were talking about God's promises, um, one of the promises that God gave to the little children was to, that they could come to him anytime and that he loved them. So for the younger kids you could make a door hanger and very simply they would be gluing on their picture and then they could take it home and they could hang it on their door. But for the older kids, you want, might want to go a step further in making a promise holder. And these would be promises from God that they would then put into their promise holder that they've made out of craft sticks. Now a four or five year old would be very difficult to give them instructions on how to make this one, but if you have somebody that's more in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, they would have a lot of fun and it would be challenging for them to then make this using paint to paint it and designing their front of their, their craft box. In this training session, you're going to find that there's a lot of different techniques and a lot of different craft ideas. My desire is that you would actually focus on the technique more than the idea of the actual craft. If we were to show you a craft on Noah here, you may only do that craft once in a whole year's time if you even do it at all. So the actual craft is not as important as the technique that was used to make this craft. Um, this particular one is made with a brad and it will show you and we'll show you later on how this craft can move by using a brad. So focus on the technique and not necessarily just the craft itself. And for those of you that are craft challenged or those of you that just feel like you have no creativity, I just want to leave you with a scripture and just let you know that the Lord can do it in you. And it's from Ephesians 3:20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So who's the one that's working in you? It's the Lord. Seek the Lord. Pray. Ask him to give that creativity to you. Although there are a lot of books out there with craft ideas, I believe that the Lord is the ultimate creator of creativity and that he can give it to you. So sit back and have fun and um, learn some new techniques that you can use in your classroom.